Hello everybody, in this video we're going to program Wordle in Scratch. Alright, let's get going. This will be one of the harder programs that I show, and you'll need to know the blocks that I'm showing in the picture here. This is how Wordle works. You're trying to guess a five letter word, and you get six tries to do it. If your letter is correct and in the right spot, it'll be marked green. And if your letter is correct, but in the wrong spot, it'll be marked yellow. And if your letter is not correct at all, it'll be marked by a gray. Here's an example of Wordle. First guess is about, it's all wrong. The second guess is fiend. I is in the correct spot and E and N are correct letters but in the wrong spot and so on and so forth until finally I guess the right answer of hinge. So that's how Wordle goes. All right, so I'm gonna make a code that picks a random item from a list and that'll be my word. If you think you can do this, pause the video and give it a shot. All right, so the very first thing I'll do is pull in the start when green flag clicked. All of my sprites should have the when green flag clicked. Next, I'm going to make a word list, and I'm going to call this list, this list I'm going to name words. So it's got an S at the end, which reminds me that it's plural, and I know that lists are plural. So this is a way that English can help you in programming. Next thing I need to do is delete all the items of words. So Scratch is different from, say, Python or whatever, and that Scratch will not, in between runs, start your list over. So if I you know, add 20 items to the list, if I restart it again, now I'll have 40 items in the list. So what I have to do when I first start out is delete all the items in my list. Next, I'm going to add a lot of words to words. My words will all be four letters. So it's a little bit different from the regular Wordle, but that's okay. I'll show you later how it's straightforward to change my code to go you know, five letter Wordles or six letter Wordles or whatever. But for now, I'm making a kid's Wordle. It'll be four letter Wordles. So I've added a lot of words to my list. And next, I'm going to pick a random number. So my random number will help me pick one of these words. Here, I'm going to make a variable called random underscore number, and I'm going to set it to a number, a random number, between 1 and the length of the word's list. And by setting it to the length of the word's list, I don't have to change my random number range every time I add an item to the list. Next, I'm going to create a variable word, and that's going to be my Wordle word. And that word will be equal to item random number of the words list. And all that means is if my random number is 3, then my word will be the third item in the list, which is coop. If my random number is 5, then my word will be the fifth item of the list, which is heard. Lastly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into a custom block. And you may ask, why do you need to do this, Dr. Wu? And the reason is I don't. What these custom blocks allow me to do is to break my code into small, testable chunks. So I can test this pick word, which I'm going to do. I can be sure that it's good. And then I can use my custom block in the main part of my code. So now my main code is a lot shorter and a lot more readable. And what I'm going to do is now that I've tested pick word, I'm just going to move it off to the side. I don't need to see it anymore. I know it just works. I don't need to have it in my vision, and everything's going to be a lot more readable. Okay, there are a couple other ways you can do this problem. One is to manually add things to my list and manually take away things to the list. I don't like this way quite as much because you can't be 100% sure of what your list contains, meaning that if you added something and if you closed your program, it may or may not be there. Uh, if you hard code the items in your list, you'll know 100% of the time everything that's going to be in the list. The second way you can do this is if you had a random number and then use a big if else. So you pick a random number between 1 and say 5, and then you said if the number is equal to 1, then the word will be equal to hoop, uh, and so on and so forth. This is not a very good way to do the problem. The reason is, is every time you add an item to the list, you need to change this number over here. And then you also need to add an if else, and you need to remember to change the number, and all these things are error prone. In addition, the number of lines that this code uses is going to be a lot more than if I just pick a random item from the list. The best way to do this part of the problem is to pick a random item from the list. OK, so for this next part, I'm going to make rounds. If you want to give this one a shot, pause the video and give it a try. If you need starter code, you can download wordle underscore starter underscore zero two, and that's available in the link in the description below. All right, so for this, I'm going to have five rounds, and so this is a fairly standard loop in Scratch. I'm going to create a variable current round and set that equal to one, and then I'm going to repeat until the current round is more than five. So for this four-letter Wordle, I'm going to have five rounds. 
And inside the loop, I need to change my current round by one. So this is a fairly standard loop, as I said before. Uh, but the last thing I'm going to do is make a variable called total rounds. Total rounds, and that'll be equal to five. And what this variable will let me do is if I want to change number of rounds to say six or seven or eight, it just makes it a lot easier for me to change. Instead of having to hunt down everywhere in my code that had this number five, I can instead just change this variable's value in this one spot, and that change will propagate all over in the rest of my code. Next, I'm going to have the user try to guess the word. This is pretty easy, so if you want to give this one a go, pause the video and give it a try. If you need starter code, you can download wordle underscore starter underscore zero three in the link in the description below. All right, so to ask a question, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the ask, and I'm going to have it ask for the word that the person wants to guess. Next, I'll make a variable guess and save my answer to that variable guess. I don't really have to do this, but when I name my variable guess, it's super obvious to anybody what that variable means. If instead I'm using the variable answer, it can be harder to remember. So all I'm doing here is making it super clear and obvious that it's the guess. And I'm done with that part of the code. But I should test, so I'll click the green flag. And when I do, you can see the round goes up. It goes through five rounds of asking me which word I want to guess. For this next part, I'm going to improve ask by making sure that the responses are four letters. If you want to give this one a go, pause the video and give it a try. If you want starter code for this, you can download wordle underscore starter underscore zero four. Link is in the description below. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is make a variable called word length. And the reason I'm making this word length a variable is in case I ever need to change the length of the word, I can easily change the length of the word. So in this case, my word length is four. And I'm going to make sure that all of my guesses are this long, four letters. To make sure all of my guesses are four letters long, I'm going to use a repeat until. And inside the repeat until is going to be my ask and setting the guess to be equal to this answer. I'll repeat until the length of my guess is equal to the length of the word. And the length of the word is four. So basically, I need to keep asking questions until I get a response that's four letters long. And that's what this repeat until does. So I'll test it here. And it doesn't look like it works. Something looks wrong. What's wrong? Well, the problem is this. As soon as I have a guess of four letters, it'll never do this repeat again. So to solve this problem, I'm going to make another variable called first ask, and I'm going to set it to false. So this is the first time I've asked this question. This round. And what I'm going to say is that if it's the first time I'm asking the question, I need to go through the loop. So the first ask starts off at true. I'll change my repeat until to also ask until first ask is false. That is, it will always ask, what do you guess, at least once. So inside the round loop, I'm going to set first ask to be true, and then I'm going to repeat until my guess is four and, and I've guessed at least once. So inside this loop, where I'm testing to see if my guesses are four letters long, I'm going to have an if or an else. The if is going to test to see if this is the first time the computer is asking me the question. If it is, after the computer asks me the question for what's my guess, it's going to set first guess to false and set my guess equal to the answer. If it's not, that means at some point previous I guessed a three or four or seven letter word, it's wrong. So it's going to ask me again for the word, but this time it's going to ask me only four letters please because I screwed up already once. So it's going to ask me for what word do I want to guess now? and I'll set guess to the answer. When I look at this code, I realize that I have set guess equal to answer in both those codes, so I can take that out and put it at the end. This is called factoring. All right, so here I am testing the code. I'll guess something with eight letters. You'll see the rounds don't change and it asks me to guess again. Then I'll guess something with four letters and the rounds keep going up all the way till the end. So I have good confidence that my code is working so far. So for this part, I'm going to program the guessing portion of the game. If you want to give this one a go, pause the video and give it a try. If you want starter code, the file is wordle underscore starter underscore zero five. Link in the description below. All right, so for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a custom block. So I can test it in isolation without having to run the code, the whole code. I can just isolate and test this one thing. All right, so I'm going to make a custom block in Scratch. 
and that custom block is going to be called check. It's going to have two inputs. Those inputs are going to be for my guess and the word. All right, so here's how this is going to work. And the first thing I'm going to program in here is a loop over each letter in the guess. So I have a variable letter counter that I'm going to set to one. I have my repeat until. And inside the repeat until, I change the letter counter by one. And I'm going to repeat until this letter counter is longer than the length of guess. So this is, again, a fairly standard loop. Helps me loop over each letter in the word. All right, inside this loop, I'm going to make another variable, which is called guest letter. And I'm going to set this to whatever the counter is, that letter of guess. So if my word is hoop, then guest letter will start off at H, and then it'll go to O, and then it'll go to O, and then it'll go to P. First scenario I'm going to check is to see if the letter is correct and if it's in the correct spot. So the way I'm going to check is to have an if and an else. Inside the if, it'll be if the guest letter is equal to letter, the counter of the word. So what that basically does is I'm checking to see if the first letter matches with the first letter of the word. The second letter of the guess matches the second letter of the real word. Third letter of the guess matches to the third letter of the real word, and so on and so forth. And for now, all I'm going to do is do a say. And if I get the correct letter in the correct spot, I'm going to say the letter, and I'm going to say correct letter, correct spot. All right, next I continue this if else, and I make another if else. And the scenario here I'm going to look for is if I have the right letter, but in the wrong spot. So here I'm going to use this block here if word contains a letter. So I'm checking to see if the word, the correct word, contains the guess letter. Remembering that if I guess the correct letter in the correct spot, it will never be here because it will have done the if and then will have exited out of this if else altogether. It only comes to the spot if it's not the correct letter in the correct spot. And for now, I'll just have it say that I have the correct letter and in the wrong spot for one second. Then finally, the only other scenario is that it's the wrong letter in the wrong spot, so I'll have it say wrong letter, wrong spot. I'm going to have one other thing as part of my check, and that is I'm going to see if I win. So I'm going to make a variable that says you win, and for now you win will be false. But at the very, very end, if the guess and the word are the same, I'm going to set you win to be equal to true. So let's see if this works. And if you look here at the variables, it looks like it does. You win is equal to true. All right, so let's test this out. I'm checking wood and food. So W is in, the, in this scenario. W is, in, is the wrong letter. The two O's are correct letter in the correct spot. And the D is also a correct letter in the correct spot. And when I run my test and I watch what the cat says, it's everything I expect. Okay, so now I'm going to try a different one. I'm going to guess D-O-X-D -D just to see. So D should be a correct letter in the wrong spot. O is a correct letter in the correct spot. X is a wrong letter. And D is a correct letter in the correct spot. All right, so I think that's it for the guess. Let's try the next one. Here I'll make a sprite with 26 costumes, one for each letter of the alphabet. If you want to give this one a go, pause the video and give it a try. If you need starter code, you can download wordle underscore starter underscore zero six, link in the description below. All right, so to make the letters that turn around, I'm going to make a new sprite. But you know what? I'm going to do one thing first, and that is I'm going to add a go to. And what I want to do is make my cat go in the bottom left corner. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to first drag my cat into the bottom left corner. That will change these coordinates on the go to. And then I'll be able to drag the go to in and put it right under the green flag. Whenever I click that green flag, the cat will go in the right spot in the bottom left corner. So now I'll make a new sprite. I'll go to the bottom right, select the choose a sprite icon, and then select paint. I'm going to change the name of my new sprite to block, and then I'm going to go to costumes. 
And for costume one, I'm gonna make a square. So I'll click on the square thing and make a small square. Now I want to change the fill. So I'm gonna change the color to go all the way, saturation all the way high, the brightness all the way high, and just leave the color at zero. And this is gonna be red right now. That's not quite right, but that's okay. We will change the colors later. All right, so now I'm going to make letters inside each of these blocks. You'll notice here that the color is not red as it's supposed to be. That's because I made a, a mistake in my video. Sorry about that. But uh, yours should be red. And all I'm going to do is to duplicate this 26 times, one for each letter of the alphabet. And then I'll go through and change the letter manually for each letter of the alphabet. But in the end, I'll have 26 costumes, each corresponding to one letter of the alphabet. And one more time, yours will be red. You'll have a color zero, brightness zero, and saturation zero. And finally, I will make one last costume, which is a blank letter, and the inside is white. This one you definitely want to be white. So I have 26 costumes plus one. The 26 corresponds to the letters of the alphabet, and the one corresponds to before I've played the game when it's blank. Last thing I did here was bring in a starting green flag and go to my starting spot, which is minus 100. 125. And that's pretty much it. All right, so for this part, I'm going to take my one block with costumes corresponding to all the letters and use clone to make it 20 blocks, one for each square of the game. If you want to give this one a go, pause the video and give it a try. If you want starter code, you can download it from the description below, wordle underscore starter underscore zero seven. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a broadcast and await in the main code, so in the sprite one, in the cat. And this will be the signal in my blocks to make all 20 blocks. So in my block, when I receive this you know, startup call, I'm going to switch my costume to the blank. That's the blank white one. And I'm going to go to minus 100 and 125, which is going to be sort of the upper left of my board. The other thing I'm going to do is when I receive the setup blocks, so when I'm initializing, I'm going to set the costume to the blank square. So it doesn't have any letters right off. Now there are two ways to basically do this. One is to make 20 some sprites, uh, you know, block one, block two. This is a really time consuming and long process and error prone. And if you make a mistake later on, uh, it's very, very unforgiving because then you got to go back and change every single one of your sprites. So this is a possible way to do it, making individual sprites, but that's not how I'm going to do it because again, it's a very unforgiving process. So what I'm going to do instead is make one block and clone that 20 times. And here's how it's going to work. I'm going to clone my original block, and I'm going to repeat that until this number of blocks is more than the total number of blocks. And the total number of blocks I have is going to be the total rounds, which is 5, times the word length, which is 4. So that's 20. And this is, again, a standard loop that we've done a bunch of times in this code already. Inside the loop, I need to change the number of blocks each round by 1. So that's it right there. And I need to loop 20 times. Where do I get that? I get that from the number of blocks per row times the number of rounds. All right, so inside this loop, I'm going to create a clone of myself. So let's try that out. The trick here is this, right? I need to keep track of all of these clones as different sprites. And so how am I going to do that? So when my clone is created, well, I'm going to make a new variable name, and I'm going to call this variable name block ID. But here's the trick, and this is super important. I'm going to make this variable for this sprite only. Again, for this sprite only. So it's a private variable to only this sprite. And that's going to be important in a second. I'm going to set the block ID. What am I going to set the block ID? I'm going to set the block ID to number of blocks. And then just to see how this works, I'm going to say the block ID. The say will stay there forever until you have another say. So some, most of the time you want to say for one or two seconds or whatever. But uh, if you need something to stay there forever, you're going to use the say. So let's try this out. What do I expect? When I start it, I'm going to expect to see that uh, all my sprites, I'm going to have 20 some blocks. And they're all going to be right on top of each other. And they're going to see all the numbers show up. And let's see if that happens. All right, it looks like I have 21 blocks, one extra block. Why is this? This is something called a race condition, meaning that how my code behaves depends on what order things go on and things happen in unexpected ways. Uh, this happens because I created a clone myself. But right after that, down here, I'm changing the number of blocks by one. And it's not really quite sure uh, what this block ID is going to be. 
So to make this happy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one extra block after you create the clone, and I'm going to uh, wait a thousandth of a second. And when I do that, that gives this code time when I start the clone to set the block ID and to say the block ID. All right, so now I have 20 squares, and what I'm going to do next is try to make it so that these 20 squares are in the right spot. If you want to give this one a go, pause the video and give it a try. If you want starter code, you can download wordle underscore starter underscore zero eight, link in the description below. So to do that, I'm going to make a new block, and that new block is going to be called new underscore block underscore coordinate. And this block is going to calculate where my new block should be. It's going to have one input, which is going to be the block number. So if I look at this, I'm going to have 20 blocks, and these 20 blocks will start at minus 100, 125. And the next block, I'm going to want to be at 0, 125. The third block is going to be at 100, 125. And the fourth block is going to be at 200, 125. So then I get to the fifth block. The fifth block goes to a new row. So the fifth block is going to be at minus 100 and 25. The sixth block is going to be at 0, 25. There's a formula for this, and I'm going to write it in terms of the block number. And here it is. For the x coordinate, we're going to say the x coordinate should be minus 100 plus 100 times block number minus 1 in parentheses, and that should be mod the word length. And the y coordinate is going to be 125 minus 100 times the floor of block number minus 1 divided by word length. And this is the kind of thing that You know, when you're starting out, you're not going to see it quite easily, but when you've done a whole lot of these kind of problems, using mod to find x, using floor to find y, these are things that are going to be familiar to you as you get more experience in coding. For now, though, just take my word for it. These are the formulas you're going to use. So I'll make two new variables to keep track of these coordinates. I'll make one block x coordinate, and I'll make one block y coordinate. And I'll set these values equal to the formulas that I just went over. So now I'll test. If my new block coordinate is 1, then I'm expecting to see minus 100, 125, and I do. If my new block coordinate is 2, I expect to see 0, 125, and I do. If my new block coordinate is 4, I'm expecting to see 200, 125, and I do. And then on to the next row, if my new block coordinate is 5, I'm expecting to see minus 100, 125, and I do. And if my new block coordinate is 9, I'm expecting to see minus 100, 75, and I do. So inside my loop, where I'm looping 20 times, I'm going to use my new block coordinate to tell me where I should go. I'm going to go to that spot, and then I'll create a clone of myself. And then every time through the loop, I'm going to move a little bit and create a new clone of myself. So it's like using a stamp to stamp out wherever my new blocks should be. So then I'll test it out. This is what I get. And you know, I think the spacing here is a little bit too much. So what I'm going to do is instead of going 100 between each one, I'll change it to 75. That's maybe a little bit too much still, so I'll make the gap between each 50. And that looks pretty good. So now you see I have 20 blocks ready to go, ready for the next step. All right, in this part, we're going to have the blocks change to the correct letters. If you want to give this one a go, pause the video and give it a try. If you want some starter code, you can download wordle underscore starter underscore 09, link in the description below. All right, in this section, we're going to work on getting the letters flipped. So when you guess a word, it'll flip four letters over. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the sprite one, and I'm going to modify my check custom block. And in the check custom block, it'll flip over the letters. To make this work, I need to add another input parameter, and I'm going to call this one round. I need the round to be able to know which block to flip. So I'll make a new variable called block counter, block underscore counter, and I'm going to set this equal to the word length times the round minus one plus the letter counter. It's going to give me the correct block to put a letter for, meaning that if block counter is equal to 10, it's going to change the letter for the 10th block. So I'll program that out real quick right here, trusting that you can follow along with the video.
All right, so now that I know which letter I want to turn, I'm going to broadcast post letter, and that will be the command that flips the letter. So now So now I'll go back to my block sprite. I'm going to make a when I receive post letter. And what I'm going to do is make sure that I'm turning over the letter on the correct block. Meaning that if I guess an A in my word, the block will turn over the letter A. So what I'm going to do is make an if block and say if the block counter is equal to the block ID. So each of these 20 blocks has a block ID. And so the block counter needs to be equal to the block that I am. And if it is, then it's going to turn over the letter on this block. If you remember from before, all of my letters are costumes. But the trick is, which costume do I change to? So the way I'm going to solve this problem, so first I'm going to make a list alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A will be 1, and Z will be 26. And I'm going to use these numbers to help me figure out which costume to show. So there I made the list, and now I'm going to make a custom block that creates this list at the beginning of my run, so I know exactly what it's like every time, just like I did with the words list. And since I've done this once before, I'm just going to zoom through this really quickly. Then I'll put that new create alphabet list block under my green flag in my block sprite. So next, I'll make a variable called costume number, and I'm going to set that equal to the item number of the guest letter in alphabet. And that sounds kind of complicated, but all that means is costume number, if I guess A, costume number will be 1. If I guess Z, costume number will be 26. So I can use this item number of list block in Scratch to tell me which costume I should switch to. So next, if it's a C, I know it's costume 3 I want. Scratch does not have a way for me to change to costume 3, but I can make a pretty standard loop that loops over the costumes until I get to costume 3. So that's what I'm doing here. So I'm going to use this trick to flip to the correct letter in my post letter script. So inside my post letter script, I'm going to make a variable costume counter, and I'm going to set that equal to 1. I will switch to make sure I'm on the first costume, so switching to costume 1. And then I'm going to repeat. I'm going to repeat until my costume counter, so my counter, is equal to the costume number. If my costume number is 5, like I guess an E, I'm going to keep on going until I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then stop. So inside the loop is next costume and change costume number by 1. All pretty much standard stuff. But what this will do is it will change my costume until I get to the correct letter. And if you watch this go, I'm going to test it now. I'm going to guess ASDF. The word is loop, but I'm going to guess ASDF. You'll see the blocks change to the letters that I guessed. So the last thing I'm going to do is set the color effect to zero. And this will be sure that it's red. So this will be post letter, which just means I'm going to switch the block to the correct letter. I'm going to set the color effect to zero, which is red. And we're going to let red be for when I get the answer wrong. So red is wrong. And you may ask, well, what are you going to do when you get the letter correct in the right spot or correct in the wrong spot? You'll see that in a second. I'll do that next. But for now, I'm just going to make it so that they're all wrong. So we're assuming that these are all wrong for now. I do have one problem in my testing, and that is the last letter does not flip to the right letter or the right color. And why is that? It's because my original block, which I'm using to stamp out these 20 blocks, is covering the 20th stamp. So to make this work, I'm going to hide that sprite at the end because if I hide the sprite, Scratch will remember between runs that it's hidden. So in the beginning, I need to show it. This is the testing in action, and hopefully you can see how it's working. And for the next part, we're going to wrap this up by making sure the colors are correct when I guess the correct letters in either the right spot or the wrong spot. Letters are correct and in the correct spot, they're green. If they're correct but in the wrong spot, they're yellow, and that's it. If you want to give this one a try, pause the video and give it a go. If you want starter code, you can download wordle underscore starter underscore 10, link in the description below. So in the last part, I posted all the letters. So all I need to do now is when I get the correct letters, I need to change the color. So I'm going to take out the say, which is a placeholder, and make a new broadcast. I'll make a new broadcast, and I will call it correct letter correct place. So then I'll go into my block sprite and make a new script called correct letter correct place. And what this script is going to do is if the letter that I'm on right now happens to be my block ID, I'm going to set the color effect and I'm going to set the color effect so that it turns to green. I figured out it was 60 through guess and check and since it's only three blocks, I figured you could build it yourself. So I'll do the same thing when it's the correct letter but the wrong spot 
I'll take out my placeholder. I'll make a broadcast in my in my cat sprite. It will broadcast to the block. The broadcast will be correct letter wrong place. In my block, I'll make out when I receive when I receive correct letter wrong place. I'm going to check to see if the block counter is equal to this block ID. And if it is, I'm going to set the color effect to 30, which is yellow. And I figured 30 out through guess and check. You'll see it here in action. The O is in the wrong spot and it's yellow. Finally, this is a case where it's completely the wrong letter. Before I had to say, know where I am in the code, but I can actually just remove this completely because I've already turned the block red earlier on in the code. So I'm just gonna remove this completely. All right, so let's give this a test. My word is heard, and I'm going to guess heard with a U. Looks good so far. The colors are all correct. But on the third round, I guessed the word correctly, and it's still asking me for a guess. So it's not quite there yet, and I need to fix it. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna set U win equals to false at the beginning, and I'm only gonna repeat this loop, this round loop, until either all my rounds are up or U win is equal to true. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm gonna repeat the loop until all my rounds are up or U win is true. Then at the very end, I'll have an if else. If you win is equal to true at the end, I'm gonna have it say you win. And if you win is equal to false at the end, I'm gonna have it say you lose. Probably it would be a little bit better if I had it say the correct word, but uh, for now, I'm just not gonna worry about that. So let's test it one more time. Looks like my word is loop. I'm gonna guess ASDF, which is Totally wrong, four reds, that's correct. I'm gonna guess ooh, 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 ooh. And you'll see that the O's are correct. Two in the correct, so you'll have two O's in the right spot. Now I think the actual Wordle will count the you know words on the end wrong. This is a shortcoming of my Wordle, but I'll live with that. I'll guess Lolo, which is L-O is correct spot, correct. And everything looks as it should. And there you have it, a working Wordle. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give me a like and a subscribe. I'll see you next time.